Fellas, let me paint you a picture. It's the 1920s and you're the head of Dole Fruit Company, shipping out pineapples and bananas, completely violating all the human rights of your poor Honduran farmers and making lots of money. Life is good, but there is one thing you often wonder about. Is it possible to fly a plane from California to Hawaii, a feat that has not been done yet? So you acquire your massive pineapple wealth and raise $25,000 or $420,000 in today's money and put it as a prize for the first man to fly his plane from California to Hawaii. Now, while this does sound like a great idea on paper, this race would go on to become the biggest American airplane tragedies of all time. Okay, this race would go on to be the second biggest American airplane tragedy of all time. So first of all, before the race even started, someone already was able to fly from California to Hawaii, and that would be the US Army. Although Dole ended up disqualifying them from the race because, I don't know, I guess sunk cost fallacy, he had already set the race up, I'm not sure to be honest. Anyway, obviously with the price this big, pilots from far and wide gathered to take part in this race. Now, initially, there were supposed to be 18 different aircraft that took part in this race. But because of a multitude of reasons, not all 18 were able to make it to the race. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Here are some of the contestants. The first two pilots that showed up were an Arthur Gobiel and Dick Grace, both of which were famously part of the Suicide Squadron. Dick Grace was taking the name to heart because he fucking crashed the airplane he was using beforehand and had to ship a completely new plane in for the race. Anyway, aside from these pilots, there was a lot of alternative weird plane designs being used for this competition. Now, I'm gonna go out on a whim and say most words that start with alternative are great things. Like for example, alternative women, they're hot. Alternative music pretty good alternative plane designs a lot of these alternative airplanes didn't even end up making it to the race because they had mechanical issues of the planes that did make it there though there was one named el enchanto which was designed based off of a bird a hand glider a different plane model or a salmon it was the fish, yup. There was also another plane named the Oklahoma. Now, there's nothing of particular note about this plane. It's just the fact that out of all the places in the world they could have named their plane after, they chose Oklahoma. That's like people who buy graphic t-shirts and the only thing on the t-shirt is Kansas. Why does this t-shirt exist? Like, what's the point? Are they happy they went to Kansas? Anyway, even of the planes that did end up working, many ended up still failing on their way to the race. For example, there was two pilots named Koval and Wagner, who were flying a plane named the Spirit of John Roger on the way to the Dole Air Race, when they got caught up in some fog and crashed into a cliff. Another plane that was supposed to take part in the race crashed into San Francisco Bay, but somehow nobody died in this accident. The same cannot be said for a British pilot named Arthur V. Rogers, who was flying the Angel of Los Angeles when all of a sudden, he described his plane as flying queer and crashed. Anyway, the remaining planes did end up making it to the race, though they were going to have a slight delay because there was going to be some horrible weather in between Hawaii and California. Although since the organization in Hawaii did not want to postpone, they only ended up delaying for four days, which means these pilots still had to fly in horrible weather conditions. It's a good thing the race was postponed for four days though, because that gave organizers extra time to make sure each pilot and plane was up to regulation and code. So first of all, five of the pilots didn't even have a license. Then there was the predetermined course these pilots had to go through, and literally none of the pilots were able to pass this test. Which means they literally failed on a practice course a couple days before they were going to be the first people to fly across the Pacific to Hawaii. That's like if you failed your driver's test, never even seen a driver's license, and then I made you drive in the Indy 500. You literally become a skid mark 20 minutes in. Anyway, after multiple attempts, most were able to pass, and so the stage was set for the actual race. Months of building their airplanes, weeks of anxiety, hundreds and thousands of people watching from the sidelines in awe, all for this moment. And immediately, the first two planes failed. Oklahoma's engine started to overheat, and Il Enchanto never even got off the runway. Okay, okay, not, not the best start. But finally, the Popco Flyer was the first plane to make it off the tarmac before immediately hurtling back down and crashing. Also, another plane named the Dallas Spirit had mechanical issues, so they weren't able to make it up either. The other contestants were able to make it up though, meaning there were still four teams in the running. And with that, the race was on. Which despite this being the climax of this entire video, 
not a whole lot is known about what actually happened during the race. And this is because even though the entire route from California to Hawaii had ships with radios, only a single plane had a radio that could actually communicate back with the ships. So as you could imagine, being out there in the open ocean with literally no way to communicate could cause things to go awry. Anyway, after 26 hours and 17 minutes, through the fog came a plane, the Woolrack, with Arthur Gobiel inside. He was the first one of the four to actually make it to Hawaii, meaning his team got the main prize. The second place was this plane called the Aloha with Mr. Jensen, who if you told me was representing Team Germany, I would not have raised an eyebrow. Anyway, he scored his team $10,000, only to give his teammate Schluter $25. $25! Are you kidding me? Now, even though Schluter definitely got the short end of the stick, he should be grateful because the other two, Miss Doran and the Golden Eagle, were never seen again. There were wide searches for them. In fact, both Gobiel and Jensen's cheap ass went out on rescue missions to try to find them, but no sight of them was ever seen again. All in all, of the 18 teams that started off participating, only two of them would ever end up actually completing the race, which is literally 11%. The end. Yeah, this one was a... Uh... This one was kind of a bummer, I won't lie, but I hope you enjoyed watching. Consider liking and subscribing. Check out the video YouTube randomly recommends to you, and thanks for watching, man. Goodbye.